Join Gator great Shane Matthews every weekday as he brings you all you need to know about your Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions with some of the biggest names in sports. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Or watch us live at 8 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good morning. It's You're looking live at Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Should be a good, happy Monday for most people. Mighty Gators went on the road in an unbelievable football game. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, all three NFL teams did not win yesterday. The Bucks got clobbered by my NFC champs, Jared Goff, and the Detroit Lions. Get you some of that, JC. JC, you were wearing your Trevor Lawrence jersey yesterday. Did, I heard he got hurt. Did he get hurt? How bad was he? Uh, he's fine. He's fine. He just got banged around a little bit on a dumb bootleg that they ran. I don't know why they would run it in that situation, but uh, I don't know why he would even take a hit in that situation. The game was over. Uh, big day for Jacksonville. Great effort from Florida. Got some real key plays. Khalil Jackson with his catching the ball. Arliss Boardingham. Graham Mertz. Unbelievable day. Best game of the season. And certainly on fourth down and ten. It's your boy, Ricky Pearsall. These guys make big plays at crunch time. I think that's the first time I've, I've truly seen that in in some time. And uh, they overcame a, a tough defensive, uh, a rather a, a rather weak defensive effort to win this game on the road. It's, it's always hard in this league, but that game, uh, you know, you're down 10 points and um, you just had to get guys to make plays. And Graham Mertz, you know, just showed his leadership uh, in that game, I'm sure you guys talked about it at nauseum, and I'm I'm glad to hear it because that's what they're going to need. That's what they're going to need going into this home stretch against these teams they're about to play. So great win for Florida, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, for some reason you had South Carolina scoring 14 points. Not sure why that was, but but well, nevertheless, here, here's what here's what I'll tell you about this. <laughs> um, I have zero concerns about our offense. I have a lot of concerns about our defense. And, and <laughs> right. the more the more I thought about it, JC, I've gone back. And went through all the games in my head. Yeah. And and I'll say it again. And Tennessee is not a very good football team. Tennessee's offense is so elementary. There's no scheming. There's no motioning. There's it's just you line up and you run inside zone or inside trap or you throw go routes. It's easy to easy to stop. AM shut them down. AM is just they they can't play offense. I think Alabama takes Tennessee out behind the woodshed this week. I just oh. don't think Tennessee is very good. So back, back to our my, my point is, yeah, I have some concerns about our defense. No yeah. question about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I The uh, last two road games were hard to watch defensively. They just couldn't uh, get off blocks, couldn't separate themselves and make tackles. Open field was kind of um, sketchy. Look, I mean – Rattler is having a good year. Let's give him a little credit. I oh, mean, they are uh, Spencer Rattler is outstanding, dude. Yeah, he he, he played out of his mind, and uh, you know that kid Leggett, Leggett, uh, very athletic looking guy. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him playing on Sundays. And so they've got some guys, they've got some dudes on that team, so they're going to score some points. But um, you're right. I mean, you got these next uh, three games. Missouri is an offensive juggernaut, apparently. With Brady Cook, Georgia, we all know about that. Arkansas, if KJ gets going, gets a little rhythm, can be dangerous. And then, of course, uh, Florida State with Jordan Travis and those crazy wide receivers they have. So, I mean, it's going to be a real challenge. You're going to have to get better on defense. But, hey, look, I want to just focus on just winning a game on the road in the SEC, keeping your SEC East hopes alive, QB. They're mm -hmm. very much alive, bro. We Kentucky control our own got, destiny. That, that's it. I mean, the Gators, the Gators could – Let's get let's get thinking about Atlanta again. All you got to do is beat Georgia and win out. I mean, it's uh, all you got to do. Well, is Brock Bowers, <laughs> Brock Bowers may not be playing against us, so we'll see. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he got banged up in that Vanderbilt game. Uh, so yeah, I mean, things can. It's amazing how they can change in October. It really is. Well, and, we we got a million texts, and I'm gonna get to some texts, some YouTube's, and all this stuff, but. Andy says, "Great call with Sean on the game. Appreciate it, Andy. It was a it was a fun one. It was Sorry. a fun one for sure. Got a ton of people here on YouTube. Uh, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, talking about 
uh, people owe Mertz an apology, owe me an apology. They don't owe me anything. Look, <laughs> I, I told y'all the guy, the guy, the guy is phenomenal. Um, he is a, he is one of the toughest football players I've ever seen. Uh, when I say we don't block people sometimes, JC. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I mean, we don't. We literally don't even get a hand on guys. I know. I know. It, it's a shame because. We have really good skill players. We have a very good quarterback that can play at a very high level. Yeah. And um, somebody was asking me, we were joking around at the golf course yesterday about Ricky Pearsall. Uh, is he the is he one of the top receivers we've ever had here? And I started thinking about it. What does he let you down? He, 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 is, he, he literally, if he was playing for Steve Spurrier, now he's Ooh. he's getting ready to set some records. He's got a chance to set some records this year. But if he was playing a Steve Spurrier offense, but I'm telling you, he's as good a route runner and catches the football as anybody I've ever seen here. Reminds and me of uh, we were joking McGriff. around. Is he is he the best white receiver we ever had? Well, he reminds me of Travis McGriff a lot. Um, just to he's, really, he's, he's he's a bigger he's bigger and faster than Travis. Um, he's he's good, man. He's unbelievable. Uh, and, and and then this kid Jackson steps out and and makes a big play. Fordingham is taken over. I think on the at the tight end position. I, I love the way his hands. He's got great hands. This kid Fordingham. So uh, look, man. I mean, you, you're right. They can score some points if they can just figure out the front seven on defense. I mean, they just got to get off blocks, dude. They just don't do that. Yeah, uh, John says Ricky reminds him of Wes Welker. Yeah, uh, Brandon says the defense is a concern. At least they're in the right position. Sometimes we're not, though. Our gap, our gap control wasn't very good the other night. And he says Mertz is the toughest guy you've ever seen relative to his size. Track. He's a big dude, though. He's he's taller than I am. He's six. He's probably six three and a half, six four, probably two twenty five. Uh, it's such a clutch play, man, on fourth and ten. I just I go back to that play. That's what leaders do. That's what winners do. They they make things. They they create and make things happen sometimes on their own. Him and he and Pearsall just they were driven to make that play and keep that game alive. Because if they don't make that fourth down, it's over. But they did, and then they went down the field. I mean, you guys had to be out of your minds in the box. I didn't get to hear you call, but I was watching it in the bar, and everybody went nuts. So I can only imagine what it was like for you guys. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a really good football game. Let me get to some of these Titan Mark text lines uh, text. Hunt says, shame. I really like hearing you, Sean's, call the South Carolina game. Certain parts of the broadcast, it was tough to hear y'all because of the crowd noise. Was Williams Bryce really rocking, especially during the Gators comeback? Yeah, it was loud. That place gets loud, man. They got, yes. you know, it, it's a cool atmosphere because. Um, the fair. Well, the fair. The fair was the reason why half the damn stadium was empty midway, through, mid, almost yeah. late first quarter because people couldn't get there. Couldn't get but, there, you know, yeah. they play the sandstorm. They got the everybody in the stadium has a white towel, yeah. um. So in their 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 way, no, they, it, do, they do a great cool. job. They support the team, man. Uh, you know, for what they're getting every year, uh, they really still they they come out and they they root like hell. But they're too. Um, Ryan says on the Titan Mark text line, "Good morning, fellas. Shane, I've I've seen many questionable decisions by head coaches this year, but Dan Lanning was just stupid and cost his team the W." Being led by his ego and going for it three times on fourth down uh, instead of taking two chip shot field goals and punting to pin Washington deep late in the game with no timeouts. He can possibly the reckless be that reckless next year with a 12 team playoff. It probably cost them a shot this year. To Jed, after coming within a Nats ass of beating USC on the road as Wildcats roll Washington State and Pullman. They're playing good football with a backup quarterback. I didn't see one play. Yeah. The only thing I saw from the Oregon game was the <clears throat> highlight of the guy missing the field goal. I don't know what decisions Dan Lanning made. I heard, saw or heard it on Twitter, yeah. but I never saw the situations. Uh, uh, he just see pulled, any of that, JC? He just pulled some basic Lane Kiffin stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, thinking that he has to do something special to win a big game when he really didn't. Bo Nix was un, in control of that, and the Ducks were right there to win it. But Washington's really physical team, man. They're pretty good. These are the two best teams in the Pac-12. I, I don't think USC, you can consider them uh, one of the two best. I think it's Washington and Oregon, clearly. Uh, USC is there, but USC was exposed. We all knew about their defense. Notre Dame coming into their third straight highlight marquee game of the week, played in primetime, and they did they did their number on Southern Cal. So yeah. Washington is, is right now, you have to say, they. I think they have a real, real chance. 
but they're going to end up playing Oregon again. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Brandon says the clutch play was the fourth and 11 dumb to throw short of the marker, but Bordenham made a guy miss. He had nowhere oh. else to throw it. He was literally getting ready to be sacked yeah. by like two or three guys had to just throw it somewhere. And yeah, Bordenham made one guy miss and yeah. you know, you, you would, you wouldn't, what people would be shocked is, and, and people get upset about this. They always talk about the guy didn't get to the first down marker on it, whether it's a third and four or whatever. I, I was in the NFL for 14 years <laughs> and routes are a lot of times routes are set at a certain distance, no matter what the down mark, marker is or what the situation is, because you can allow your guys to make a play. You know, if you have shallow crosses coming and they run them too deep and you have digs coming behind them, now your spacing is bad. So a lot of offenses rely on a guy catching a ball and making a guy miss to get a first down. So, but 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 that play was huge, but he had nowhere else to throw it. It was yeah. either take well, a sack or throw it to him short of it and hope for the best. And, um, and I think, yeah. And the game forced them to go vertical. And I love that because they can do it. We know they can. They got the quarterback, they got the speed on the outside, they can go vertical, and the game forced them to. I was really happy to see that they could. And Jackson made one of the best catches I've seen all year, along with Pierce Saul. And, I mean, these guys can play. Let them go. Uh, this is another text on the Titan of Martech sign. You are correct. We've got some receiving weapons. Tune up yeah. the O-line and we are good. Let me yeah. tell you something. Yeah. Uh, O-line ain't probably going to get any better. It is what it is. Uh, yeah. We had on the on the reverse pass play, Trey Wilson, would st- he would have been running to Charlotte, North Carolina by now. <laughs> he was so wide open. But we allowed two guys to come off the edge. If just one guy comes off the edge, I think Graham can manipulate him and at least lob it down there. But we had two come unblocked. <clears throat> he had to just throw it away, get intentional grounding. I don't know if the ball slipped out of his hand or what. <clears throat> but great play call. Just to, We've called two trick plays this year, and they backfired. Yeah. Uh, but they could have been big. Yes. Uh, another text on the Titan, Mark text line from Eric Code 276, wherever that is. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about a three-way undefeated tie in the ACC. Glad we got a much-needed road win before the bye week. I don't expect to beat Georgia, but I hope we play discipline ball and are in the game for a chance late. Yeah. Uh, my Louisville Cardinals <laughs> blew it. Conference road games, man. That's I mean, yeah. it, we overlook it. We always think of, oh, well, they can take Pitt out. Pitt's t- trash. You know, conference road games are just a different animal. Um, and, and so, you know, we saw USC deal with that, even though they were playing a Notre Dame team that's not in their conference. It's just tough to go on the road, man, play these teams. And, and, and so winning a conference is, is a huge <laughs> deal. And, yeah, you're right. Louisville, I think you can kiss them goodbye. Um, Miami, you can certainly kiss them goodbye. It's, it's North Carolina, Florida State. And believe it or not, I think Clemson is still in the conversation. JC, somebody just sent me this text. Yeah. I'm going to read these stats to you. Tell me who these gentlemen are. Let's hear it. Uh, through, however, I guess, six or seven games, however many um, these guys have played. I guess this is for your Heisman Trophy potential. Oh. If you were a voter. If you were a voter, J.C. And I have would you I Listen was, to me. Would uh, you, would, I'm going to give you two players. Okay. A has thrown for 1,482 yards, 247 yards a game, 8.1 yards per attempt, 63%, 13 TDs, one interception. Hmm. Player two has thrown for 1,897 yards, 271 yards per game, 8.5 yards attempt, 76 completion percentage, 12 TDs, two interceptions. Um, Is that that one of them our guy? You got Jordan Travis was player A, Graham Mertz was player B. Graham Mertz's stats are better, so whatever. I had had a feeling one of them. None of that matters, but we've lost twice, so. Well, I had a uh, feeling one of the he was one. Look, he's got another year still, and I, I had a mm-hmm. feeling one of those was our guy. Um, but that's pretty pretty damn impressive, man. I, and you know, yes, Saturday didn't hurt his stats at all. So, but he's got guys that that are helping him out, man. They're getting open for him. They're giving him a chance, and that's what you have to have. Yeah, Gre- uh, Greg asked on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Shane. What did you think of Billy calling a running play with no timeouts with about a minute left? Uh, are you talking about at the end of the game? We had, well, I think we had time. At the the last series, I was kind of talking myself through it if I was coaching or playing. And I was like, look, all we need is a field goal. You know, yeah. get in field goal range, 
it maybe take shots at the end zone. We and did call about, a run play and lost two yards. I had no problem with it. No problem at all. I about, thought we how, handled the clock at the end of the half and at the end of the game very, very well. Well, Smack has clearly been one of the, the diamonds in the rough that they found on this team that I guess they didn't know they had at the very beginning of the year. But he has been tremendous. He is Evan McPherson part two is who he is. And, I mean, every on TV, I don't know if you can see it, if you watched it. I know you watched it in person, but on TV, his ball, it just accelerates up in the air. It's it's a very strong leg. It's kind of like that kid at Arkansas. These kids can really kick it. Smack's been a great, great find for Florida. He's been a very important player, dude. They, you know, they have to get three, right? So, I mean, if they can't <clears throat> score a touchdown, get three, and he's doing it for them. Well, and a lot of people were upset with us kicking field goals. I understand that, but when it's hey, third, three, and listen. when it, when you when you are when you get a holding call or a sack, yeah. and it goes to third and fifteen, <clears throat> you've got about less than ten percent to convert it. So, you want to throw short, <clears throat> gain about five or six yards, and allow your kicker to make field goals. Josh says. Um, on the Titan of our text line, if we can fix some things on defense, maybe we have a shot to make it a closer game than the experts think versus Georgia. Your thoughts, we have a chance. We always got a chance. Um, defense got to play a lot better. Uh, we have some serious issues when teams run gap scheme, counters, and uh, powers yeah. against us. Uh, I could run through some of those holes. So, look, we're going to be probably a two-touchdown underdogs, my guess. I bet we're I bet we're a 14-point underdog against Georgia, which is about right. But – we still can control our own destiny. So. Totally do. Uh, control our own destiny. Um, you know, rivalry games are different animals, man. And if you have an off, see, the thing is, is that you go into a Georgia game and you think, well, if we're not going to score, we, there's no point in going. But this team can score points apparently now. All of a sudden, our offense well, is great. Well, right? but JC, I mean, that what I saw the other day is what I saw in this summertime. Yeah, throwing yeah. it all, all around the place with dudes that yeah. can make people miss. Right, and, and and I don't know why you wouldn't do that against Georgia. That's how you beat them. You throw it all. I don't over know the why yard. you wouldn't do that against anybody we play from now on. Yeah, I get it. I I totally get it. But when you talk about a team like Georgia, I've seen successful teams beat them in the air, going downfield and attacking the defense, and that's how that's how they've lost the last two times I've seen them lost lose, and they didn't lose to Ohio State, but they should have, and we all know that. But any drive that ends in a kick, whether it's smack or the punter sticking it down there inside of the 15-yard line is a good thing because you want long fields with this defense, right? You don't want to put this defense in a bad position inside your own territory. And so <laughs> field goals, here's where the missed field goal just deflates the whole bench. But when they make field goals, they feel like they've accomplished something. It keeps you scoring points. It keeps the momentum going. It keeps the offense in gear. So I, I think field goals are huge. Even though I'd rather have touchdowns, you've got to have a kicker, man. You cannot win without a kicker in close games. You can't. Uh, Joe said the first drive and the last two drives the first time all year the offense felt aggressive. Billy pressing in the red zone. <sighs> um, he just had a good play call. I, I think we were playing for the field goal, quite honestly, which I'm fine with. Right. We call slug. We call sluggo scene where Khalil Jackson had a slant go. He got mauled. So <laughs> you look there, if that, and you kind of by looking there, you take the safety <laughs> one high out of position, and he comes back. And number two read is the seam and. Ricky Pearsall ran an unbelievable route, and it was an yep. unbelievable throw to yeah, win the tremendous. ball game. Just tremendous. I, I just really was impressed with the way those guys performed at the end. Um, QB, speaking of performing, um, you <laughs> you <laughs> performed at a 5-7-1 and one clip. Okay? That's good. Yeah, I was 8-4-1. and one. You are now 33-48-2. I'm 48-33-2. and two. Um in the Peachland Dental Pace Contest. And how about this kid, Montgomery, for the Rangers last night? Five hit the Astros with six strikeouts in a shutout, combined shutout, with their bullpen as Texas Rangers. Still unbeaten in the postseason, taking one out lead on Houston. How about that? That was last yeah, night. Yeah, that's that's impressive. There's no it question is. about it. It absolutely is. They've had one home game in the playoffs. They played everything else on the road and won them all. <laughs> I, I can, I, I'm sure the uh, the TV networks do not want to see the Rangers and the Diamondbacks play each other. Yeah, no, they're praying for the Phillies. But I think either Houston or Texas, because you got the Dallas market, you got the Houston market, and then, of course, I, I know they're rooting for Philly. But Phoenix, listen, I'm going to be there Friday night. I'm going to be waving my Diamondback. Are you buying a Diamondback hat? I, I've got a Diamondback hat, and I'm going to – you've seen the Diamondback hat. And I'm, you asked me, to see, name one player on the Diamondbacks. And, and, you know, I'm going to raise hell on Friday night rooting for the Diamondbacks against the Phillies. Sorry. 
mom. Mom's a Philly fan. She was born and raised in Philadelphia. But anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, let's, you know, QB, you're getting closer. 571. He took some L's. I I, you know, my, my, my give a crap Syracuse, is about that. Auburn, Syracuse. <laughs> you love Texas a and I, I don't know what it is. I'm done with them. They, they, you, they, 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 you know what? <laughs> I, I watched I watched some highlights of that game. Max Johnson's not a very good quarterback. Well, he's getting killed. God, off he, he holds the ball forever. Yeah. All right, got I got to get to some of these Facebook lives, JC. Okay. Okay. Tony yeah. wants to know on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law. What would I do with Jackson? Make him a hybrid tight end wide receiver? Yes, I would make him Arliss Boardinghouse uh, Boardinghouse backup. Uh, I love Khalil. He's made some good catches for us, but uh, from an explosive standpoint, he doesn't have the speed that the other guys have. Um, yeah, but, but I catches. would I would use him as that other inside. I'd put him inside. We got him outside. I don't like him outside. That's just me. If I was running the offense, that's what I would do with him. He catches everything. Yeah, but sometimes you got to get open. And when, the the thing that the one the one formation that bothers me is that when we line him up as the single receiver in a three by one, when you have single coverage, mm-hmm. that's where you want to isolate and attack that defender. Yes, and he doesn't have the speed or the wiggle to do that. Yep. And um, interesting. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, Andy Jean tweaked his hamstring or something, so that's why he was out this past week. Uh, but again, this team is extremely dangerous when you have one, three, and six and eight on the field with your tailbacks. Yeah, extremely dangerous. Yeah. So maybe they'll, maybe they'll continue listening to our show. You think well, they kind of, the they kind of, you know what? It reminds me of when uh, Trask was had all his weapons out there, and they were just distributing the ball. Well, these weapons, well, Trask has some weapons now. I was trying to think the other days. People Grimes. can correct me if I'm wrong. I know he had Tony and Pitts, but didn't Grimes. he have Trayvon Grimes and Van Jefferson all yeah, at the same time? He had some ballers, man. Grimes was yeah. great, and and you know who was running the ball that offense? I don't even remember. But nobody they, gives a damn about the running. Oh, Tony, Tony. Tony. Wasn't Tony on the on, on the offense there? He was the wide receiver. Yeah, but he they 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 put him in positions where he could just take a jet sweep or something. But I, I listen, I I agree. I I mean, there's we're start, starting to discover these guys that you've been hammering the table about since September first. I mean, you've been banging the table about this, so I guess they are watching the podcast. Guess who else is watching the podcast? I must special shout out. To Robin Martin, who runs a tailgate called the Harmonic Woods, and he sent me a um, a email because he needed a slogan for his shot board, where they all line up and take shots. And when I was talking about eliminating Vanderbilt from the SEC, the shot board slogan said, "Show Vandy the door." Hey SEC, show <laughs> Vandy the door. And so Robin, the mayor. I'm coming to your tailgate for Arkansas. Thank you for the email. Can't wait to meet all you folks and go get it. I can tell you where it's located, JC. And you, you, yeah, he told me that you, you've you made your track through there. and I Yeah, it's hard for me it. to get by there now with pregame. I, I did stop by there and parked illegally right there, basically in the middle <laughs> of the damn road to say hello. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to go see those guys. That's great to get an email from the Gator. Yeah, well, they're, they're loud and have fun, JC, so you'll That's fit right in. Right down my alley, man. I can't wait to shot board, man. Hey, SEC, show Vandy the door. Show them the door. They're terrible. They're embarrassing. Oh, so Dan Dan tells me here, which Dan, he has all the inside information. Oh, yeah. Uh, even though he lives in Texas, he has inside scoop. <laughs> that the team went to the movie Friday night. Uh, I, don't, I didn't know that. I don't hang out with the team. I go Dude, to dinner. Good they for are, them. They so are they are right. listening to this show. This show, it, it is just, I mean, numbers. You think Billy's off. listening right now? Uh, why wouldn't he be? What else has he got to do at uh, uh, 830? I mean, hell yeah, Billy. We're, we're on your side, Bill. Just keep it going with that vertical passing. You'll be, you'll give Georgia. So, all- so this, this is the, this is the, uh, the week that, you know, coaches don't do this anymore, but if coach Spurrier was still the head coach, he, what is today? Monday, he'd give the team, no, the team would probably practice. We'd have a walk through today, have a little light practice Tuesday and Wednesday. They give you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And uh-huh. he'd go to the beach. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Look, he knew what he was going to do on the following week. I mean, wasn't that open date usually before the Georgia game anyway? Or, I mean, it seems like. I we can't always, remember. Well, I can't feels remember. like we do have an open week. 
just about this time of year. I think it's great. Listen, five and two. You're, you know, right, so, you're getting, so, so getting some guy five. named Coach Odom on, on that, that he should be in a meeting, but he's he's watching our show. No show. He says he says the boys have been meeting for about two hours. By by the hell I, he would guess. He's pretty sure they're not listening to my show. Well, but Coach show, Odom is. This show is recorded, bro. They watch it at night when they're bored. <laughs> and, and, and they're watching this at nighttime. They can watch it anytime, 24-7, my man. So Yeah. Coach Odom had a big win this week. I'm and good, uh, good for Jerry. Yeah, so good for Jerry Odom. Um, How did Kerwin do? Did Kerwin do? They were all. Kerwin's got a big game this week. Uh, I think Firm. They play Furman. Uh, Clint on YouTube brought you by Quality Pump says Georgia Week's his favorite week. Having something to play for than pride will make it even better. You never know what can happen in this game. Now they have you to prepare know. for the pass. I hate UGA. Hey, Look, that ball, like I, mean, I said on the radio tonight, that ball is not round, so it doesn't bounce right. normal. <laughs> it can bounce crazy ways. So all I, all I can tell you is that uh, Georgia is due for a, a, a an upset or a loss, or in Georgia. If that game is close and then later it gets into that game, we'll feel the pressure more than Florida. Florida's going to play in there with what to what they got to lose. Florida is not expected to win this game. And they they are in charge of their own fate in the SEC East. It's tremendous. Because yeah. Missouri right. just dealt Kentucky right off the do you, do you realize that game? I, I saw this and I could be wrong. It was 14 0 Kentucky. It was. Did you know that? And yeah. Missouri supposedly ran a fake punt inside their own 20. Yes. And it turned the whole game around. That's why that you know sometimes you got to make these uh, very strange calls. Sean Payton won a Super Bowl kicking it on side uh, onside kick at halftime. Uh, you know, Urban Meyer faked the punt against Arkansas in the SEC championship game. It changed the whole complexion of what happened. And Florida went on to win that game. I was there. I was, I'll never forget that fake punt against Arkansas. So, yeah, I mean, this is why you play them. This is why you play them. Florida's going to go in there with a nice little win behind them and five wins under their belt, the quarterback who's red hot and a bunch of wide receivers who are hard to cover. So let's see what happens. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Brock Bowers is one of the best players in America. One of the best oh. tight ends, if not the best tight end I've oh, ever yeah. seen. I mean, you know, I don't ever want to say, I hope he doesn't play. I hope he doesn't play. Yeah, we I mean, can't it, cover the damn guy. It, we no, will not be does. able to cover him. It's that He's simple. A, he should be invited to New York. So that's the kind of player he is. And uh, certainly I think uh, Georgia is a much different offense without him because Carson Beck needs him in that offense. There's no doubt. Bobo loves Brock Bowers. So Titan MR text line. Anonymous texter says, why does our D-line have so much trouble against the run? Are they getting manhandled, not executing assignments or something else? Um, sometimes you got to give the opposing team a good, you know, tip your hat, good play call. I mean, they they have coaches that get paid, and they have players on scholarship. That's right. Uh, I just think we have serious problems with gap scheme blocking. Well, you saw it in um, Kentucky, and you saw it that, last year. Right. I mean, that's that's yeah. something that has to be fixed or addressed because Georgia will run the football if they can. They will run it down your throat. Yeah, they're big. Very and big. they'll they'll control the clock. That's what that. I mean, Kirby will do that all day long, or Bobo, I should say, will do that all day long. And he wants to know how big of a hit did Caleb Williams Heisman hopes. He's done. He's done. It well, was going to be difficult for him to be a two-time winner anyway. Nobody wants to give him give a back-to-back -back winner. Uh, he played horrible, but that game kind of went how I thought. You would think Lincoln Riley. Look, I think Rick Lincoln Riley is so good offensively, but Lincoln's got to sit down and say, okay, this dude that's been my D.C. has been with me everywhere I've been. He's the Grinch. I got to cut ties. I got to cut ties with him. Yeah, he's I don't know Grinch. if he's related to him or what. Alex but, the Grinch that stole defense. He's the yeah. Grinch that stole defense. Alex Grinch. I don't know what the, the love affair is with that guy, but they're not going anywhere with that with that defense. And um, I don't know why I didn't see that. But uh, Richard's got an interesting question here on YouTube. Brought to you by Quality Plumbing. Shane, you have already mentioned it. But when we kicked off to Vandy a week ago, why did the officials spot the ball on the seven-yard line where the fair catch was made instead of the 25-yard line? Because the guy that caught it was not the guy that made the fair catch. So if you fair catch it, obviously the ball is going to go to the 25-yard line. But if if JC and I are the deep backs and I, I'm waving fair catch, but JC's the one that catches it, that's why the ball's spotted right there. Yeah, I'm dead uh, right there. 
So, yep. Hopefully I'll um, catch it. <laughs> what's that? Hopefully I'll catch it. <laughs> well, we wouldn't put you back there, JC, first of That's all. You're not real problem. elusive. Oh, <laughs> Uh, is that right? Well, um, yeah, listen, um, I'm just, I'm relieved, man. I'm just relieved. I, I'm so glad they won that game Saturday. Just, it's, there's hope. There's still hope. What did you, what were your, what, did you watch the whole game, JC? Yeah, the whole game. When we were down 10 with less than five minutes to go, you didn't feel pretty I, good, did you? No, I ordered a, I ordered a Big Nose. That's the mm -hmm. heavier brand that they serve. Because I was scared that they, they weren't going to convert that 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 possession. But when he hit that fourth down, and I said, oh, they're, they're meant to win this game. They're going to go down the damn field and score. And, and God, I love seeing that. That's Those are the kinds of things that you remember after their playing days are over. Remember when Merch hit Pearsall in the corner? Oh, that was, that was, I mean, it was it was an unbelievable drive. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. A few more minutes with JC, then y'all just have me. I, I knew we'd have a lot of people communicating today, so I wanted to try to get to many uh, people. Yeah, uh, big win, man. Big road win. As First much. one what, what what was it? Two and fourteen or something? A ridiculous number. What was their record before this? Who? In the uh, Florida's on the uh, road in the SEC. One and eight. One and eight. Why did where did I come? Sam Sam one? Sam has a question for you, JC, on Facebook Live. What are your thoughts on Tim T Tebow for OC? Well, listen. If you want to watch Urban Meyer's offense, call him up. But I like what Tim's I, never coached. Tim Tim Tim's yeah, never coached. He but that's who that. he played for. That Dan Mullen. Right. You know, you want to see Dan Mullen's offense again. There it is. But uh, listen, I, 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 I really, really am much more optimistic than I was last week because I saw things I hadn't seen this year from this team. Uh, they showed some guts, and they are right back in this race because Kentucky sucks and Tennessee sucks, and both are going to lose. I mean, Kentucky Tennessee got is who I said Tennessee was going to be. Well, Tennessee, I mean, good win, granted, but they're going down to play a game through. And, uh, yeah, and Alabama, look, they got kind of careless in the second half. There's no question about it. Milrow was sailing passes, whereas in the first half he was hitting passes. So, you know, they're kind of inconsistent as well, but they are in charge of the West. If they, if they, I mean, all they have to do is beat LSU and Tennessee because Auburn's not going to beat them. So, uh, yeah. I mean, but defensively, you know, we'll see. I, I think Mississippi is going to play at Georgia here coming up in a couple of weeks. Keep your eye on that game, too. All right, a couple of things, and I want to switch to the NFL for a minute. Okay. Norm, yeah. Norman says, Shane, do you think Billy has Russ Calloway in the play calling? The offense looked totally different. No. no look, look, if, if anybody listens to the broadcast, and most people watch it on TV, and I get it, but you will hear me going back to the Utah game when we'd have single coverage, yeah. throw it down here. When you throw the ball deep, there's only one bad thing that can happen, and that that has to be one of the worst throws you can possibly make if it gets intercepted. And if it gets intercepted, it's as good as a punt. That's so right. we attacked the weakness of the defense a lot. We threw the slot inside slot fades multiple times against man coverage. These are high percentage throws down the field. Um, me, they're getting you for free right now. I yeah, mean, they are. Yeah, they're getting you for free. You're not even charging for this, basically, except the advertisers. I mean, they're getting you for free. The show is delivering for the University of Florida and its fans. He's watching. I'm telling you, he is. Yeah. So we had some questions about uh, losing uh, Boone. Yeah, he he would have helped for sure on the outside on defense. But uh, I, you know, it, we we have what we have right now. We just had to we just have to be more stout uh, at the point I, I just of want folks to be patient because the other team's going to score. But just be yeah. patient because Florida. Yeah. Well, you're not going to shut anybody out. Right. That's the yeah. thing. That's the other team is going to make yards. It's just like when we complete a pass, everybody's excited. Well, the opposing team is want to know. I guarantee you today, yeah, on the South Carolina calling shows, poor number twenty one or twenty seven that was covering Ricky Pearsall is getting yeah. blasted, killed. Now he had pretty good coverage, quite honestly. It was just a great throw and a great route. They made a play, man. Yep, they made a play. Right. And they're in. They're insane. So, JC, let's let's touch yeah. on the NFL, but before that. <laughs> Did you know my man Ju Young Kim won the PGA tournament <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, I did about it nine thirty last night. Somehow, I, it was it came to me that he won a tournament. I got he's, thir he's won three times on tour, and he just turned twenty one. <laughs> Think about that, guys. Guys got skills. He's got a lot of skill. 
Got a lot of skill, lots and lots of skill, really talented player. Um, but let me tell you, a guy who's been absolutely tremendous, as we all have talked about Brock Purdy, he got to see a defense in some bad weather yesterday, and they, they locked him up. Now, the 49ers are a little concerned. They've got two of their best players hobbling around, Samuel with a shoulder and CMC with an oblique. And if they don't have CMC and Sanders, and I'll tell you this, Jim Schwartz, if you want to know a way to stop Kyle Shanahan in his tracks, you just hire Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz is is nine and one against Kyle Shanahan. Do you know who Jim Schwartz is? Yeah, he's he was a head coach and got fired a couple of times. The defensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns, who are very nasty on defense. And let me tell you who else played great. Uh, uh, Josh Allen and um, the Jacksonville Jaguar defense yesterday. Uh, Gardner had no chance yesterday. He was getting harassed the whole game, and uh, they were trying to mix in a little Jonathan Taylor. But the Jags looked pretty good yesterday, and uh, they have a short week, and they'll play a, a very hard-to-figure-out New Orleans Saints team on Thursday night. My wife's going to that game, by the way, in the Superdome. <laughs> well, the NFL's crazy. I mean, who would have ever thought <laughs> that the crazy. Eagles – Hertz played terrible yesterday. He did. He and played the like, way the 49ers played. I mean, that's the right. National Football League, folks. They have both lost the Jets and the Browns. And let's let's uh let's let's talk about those Lions. You're a uh, NFC champion. Um, just never a doubt with Tampa. Never a doubt. No. Jared Goff. Their so their play caller is is one of the I mean, he's like 27. He's so damn young and he can call plays, man. Well, and Jared Goff is playing outstanding. And then how did Buffalo manage to score 14 on the Giants last night? 14 I don't know. Nine. When I went to bed, they were losing. What? I mean, what is that? So yeah, That's I'm the sure. National Football League. The other <laughs> team gets paid and <laughs> has good players. All right, JC, real quick. Zach wants to know on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumber. One question, is Kimber really a top two corner on our team? Yes. He's a good player. Again, he's going to give up pass completions. The biggest plays in the game that people don't, don't remember – it was, I think, the last – it was – I think Carolina had to kick a field goal to go up by 10. They had the ball first and goal on, yep. like, the five. On second down, they had a guy wide open in the flat. They throw it. Kimber comes up, takes his legs out. No game. And the very next play, we sack uh, Spencer Rattler. They had to kick a field goal. If they score two touchdowns – if they score a touchdown there, the game's probably over. Probably so. Is. I, I hear what Zach is saying because you see him give up a couple of plays or get a PI, but dude, it, it's it's hard to play DB. It's hard. I think he's a very good player. Yeah, very good. Player. Well, again, folks, get your expectation level normal with this defense. The other team's going to score, but you've got an offense finally around here that looks like they can as well. Although we haven't seen a whole lot, that game showed me a lot. It showed me a lot. And uh, Mertz, you know, if you let him play. And, and take the handcuffs off him. He can make things happen with those wide receivers. Uh, I think we now yes, know he that. can. He's he's got everything you need. Yeah, he's he, he he processes information. Yeah, knows he's where got to go help. with the football. He's, he's accurate. Help. He anticipates, and he's extremely tough. Right, that's and all you need help. as a quarterback. Kids can catch. Kids can run routes. Get open. Not get open. Battle on one on ones. They win their one on ones all the time. Don't they win their one on ones a lot? I mean, it just seems yeah. like they do to me. Wilson is just going to get better. Caleb Douglas, when is he coming back? Probably, probably not. No. Okay. So you got Wilson, Mizell. No, I'm I don't telling know. you. Where, I'm telling you again. Where's Mizell at? He played. He, he he. We try to throw him a go route. Yeah. Uh, he needs to play. But for this team to be explosive, and these guys do not need to come out of the game. We don't need a substitute until they're freaking tired. Right. One, three, six, and eight. Yes. One, three, six, and eight. <laughs> Let's get yes. a shirt. One, three. Six and eight. That's it. That's all yeah. you need. One three thirteen sixty eight. One three that'll, one that'll, three that'll, six eight, and then in parentheses that'll. put two and seven, <laughs> two or seven. I thought Montreal ran really well the other day. He blocked yeah. well. Um, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, Andy says Mertz Armstrong seems average on deep throws. No. Ah, you As I've stated on this show multiple times, he had a he has a way stronger arm than I ever did. Way stronger arm than Danny Werfel ever did. Most of the Spurrier quarterback, he's got plenty of arm strength. People, I mean, he throws a catchable ball. Arm strength is so overrated. You know, it's amazing to me. 
it's amazing to me how these damn general managers in the National Football League just pick guys because of the damn measurables. It blows my freaking mind. Well, look at Trey Lance. Where's that guy? I mean, yeah. that's the only reason he got drafted. San Francisco, I don't know what they were thinking, but they made up for it. They let him go, and they found this other kid. But, yeah, that's right. I mean, that was just a that was just a miss, that's all, based yeah. on – yeah. All right, JC, uh, all right, who's man. the Monday night game? Yeah, so tonight uh, looks like we're going to have – it was right on the tip of my tongue, but tonight you've got the um, – <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, come on, Johnny. You got the Cowboys and the Chargers out at SoFi. Well, you're By the way, go, my Rams, I, Rams are three and three. Uh, but yes, the Chargers. I thought you got rid of them. Well, I've got them in the back, back closet. They're still there. But the Chargers, um, tough team uh, without no Mike Williams. He's gone for the season. But they still have Keenan Allen. They have a bunch of tall dudes that can catch. Yeah, and by the way, speaking of tall dudes that can catch that Florida State kid, man, what a oh, what he's a, good. He's what made a, their team different. No, no, you're talking. You're you're not. Keon Coleman's not that tall. He's probably six two. You're, they have really? a big six five. Johnny Wilson. Whew. Keon Coleman is a legit NFL guy that's <laughs> made Florida State much better. I mean, he's he's something they haven't had in a while. But yeah, um, so Chargers and Cowboys. If Dak Prescott plays like he has late recently. The Cowboys are on their way down the toilet um, because he's got to get the ball in the end zone, and he just hasn't been able to. So we'll see if Dallas can get get it straight yeah. out. I don't know. I think the Chargers are probably going to win tonight, but we'll see. Yeah, I think the Chargers win too. Uh, yeah. And then in baseball, I think the Phillies win the the NL Philly uh, against the Diamondbacks. I think they win the uh, well National Wheeler. Wheeler's such a good pitcher right now in the playoffs. I mean, if you had money. You want Zach Wheeler in the playoffs, and he's he's proven it with the Phillies. Okay, but the Diamondbacks- Hang on. We're, I'm, I'm back to the merch. A bunch of okay. people talking about merch. Okay. Greg says he threw one or two yards short on most deep ball sack. Folks, if he overthrows it, y'all are bitching. If he underthrows it, it gives you a chance. Here's the thing. Trey Wilson had two balls thrown to him on deep balls that he is he will learn that he needs to fight for him. He gets an easy p- pass interference call, yep. but he didn't. Um, yep. Look. He throws. He can throw a ball sixty to sixty-five yards. However, you don't throw a ball that far in a game, folks, unless it's a hail mary. A deep ball, on average, there have been studies done, forty-four to forty-eight yards is how far you throw deep balls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it just baffles me. It baffles me that people don't think he has. He's well. Got listen, really good on. think more about the plays he's making. The one to Jackson. The one to Pearsall. The one to Bordingham. I mean, these are the these are the guys that are going to make this team successful if they're going yep. to win. Yeah. All right, JC, go all right. go hit them straight. That's JC all right, with all these. Yes. You have a – oh, I thought you had a Jaguar jacket on too. No, this is Torrey Pines. That's out in San Diego. Okay, okay. All okay. right, that's JC. Join us on the table more hotline. We're going to take a quick timeout, come back. Got millions of texts, Facebooks, YouTubes to get to. We appreciate you chiming in. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. We'll be right back. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Dave & Buster's, eat, drink, play, watch. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Thursday, November the 16th, come celebrate the release of our Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, Lugo's Risky Rum. This exclusive release 
features a special spread of our farm to table food, rum cocktails, raffles, and a meet and greet with me. Each ticket includes a bottle of Spurrier single barrel select risky rum. And I'll sign the bottle if you'd like. So get your ticket before they sell out at Spurriers.com. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve and small enough to care. Silverback Concrete is a family-led team of heavy concrete specialists that build commercial structures with unrivaled quality. Silverback Concrete, you stand on it, we stand by it. I want to thank JC for joining us on the Titan Tomorrow Hot, Hotline. Reggie says, I think Reggie, Reggie says, Shane, when Merch threw the D-ball to Jackson, people were screaming the tight end was wide open. When it's open deep, they scream. When it's open short, they scream. I think you're referring to, Reggie, it was, I think it was the play after Khalil caught the diving one from about 45 or 50 yards. We ran a play action from about the four or five yard line where it was an all sellout run. And we had uh, Khalil going from right to left on a crosser and Hayden Hansen, they basically crisscrossed. And yes, Hayden Hansen, they, they busted the coverage. He was wide open. Graham made a good throw. Khalil made a great catch. The problem with that is, is exactly what you're saying. People, I have people tweeting me and texting me who should have thrown it there. That's the problem with what I call mirrored routes. That's real, that's kind of not a mirrored route. Mirrored routes are when if you're like in a two by two, the left side runs the same route concept as the right side. You throw it over here, people see what happened over there. I've never liked mirrored routes. I think it's elementary type football. Uh, you should have a beater for different coverages on both sides. But that's a good design of a play action against man coverage. And uh, sometimes you choose the wrong guy, but they still made a play. Uh, Daniel, Shane, do you make the HBC pay for advertising? you damn right. No, I don't know. I don't handle the advertising, but that's funny you asked. Uh, Chris says on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, your prediction was eight wins this season. What three games and the rest of the schedule are wins? Uh, honestly, I, I think we're as good as every team that we play, except maybe obviously Georgia. LSU is beatable, uh, although Jalen Daniels is playing outstanding football. Their offense is scary, but their defense stinks. Uh, but everybody else, I, I'm not, I've been telling y'all, I don't believe in Florida State. I think they've been squeaking by. If you look at stat wise, uh, they have one of the worst defenses in America. Um, now this week may have helped them play in Syracuse's offense. So, um, I'm still sticking with that, Chris. Uh, let's see here. There was another question here. I want, oh, uh, JJ, JJ on YouTube brought to you by Quad Pons. Thoughts on emergence of Artist Morningham at tight end. Athletic dude who can make people miss, can run after the catch. Uh, I don't know about his blocking skills. He, he stayed in to max protect on the touch, the, the sluggo scene that we threw for the game winner. Uh, didn't do a great job, but he got in the way. You know, sometimes Coach Spurrier say, you don't have to be a great blocker. Just get in the way like you're, you're drawing a charge. Let the guy run your ass over. Just, that gives the quarterback just enough time to get it out. Uh, Greg says, I'm not saying Merch doesn't have enough arm strength. His accuracy isn't great on the deep balls. I disagree with that. I understand he was under pressure and is unable to step into That's That's true. Uh, his accuracy has been really good on the deep balls. He threw some deep balls to Khalil, but I think Khalil ran the wrong route on both of them. He ran too much up the seam. When you have that slot fade, you got to fade to the outside, and that's where the ball was thrown. Uh, but look, he's he he is so damn good. Um, Gene says, "Congrats on your recent honor. I believe you're recognized at SEC championship game. Yes, how good would it be for the Gators to join you there? Uh, it'll be great. It'd be great if we made it there. No question about it. Uh, hopefully that that will happen." Um, Van Der says, Shane, please discuss the possibilities for the team when we pull out a win against Georgia, then what? Well, if we beat Georgia, I mean, we control our own destiny moving forward. You beat Georgia, now you're in the driver's seat to go to Atlanta. You got to win all your games, though. Um, you lose to Georgia, you're out of the race. You can still have a very good year. Um, but, you know, we got time to heal up a little bit. And then – um Go, go to Jacksonville, see what happens, man. Uh, Michael says on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plum Machine, loved your call for a pass, then it happened. Dear Billy, when we throw, we win. <laughs> uh, Andy says, Shane, why would Khalil Jackson have two mouth guards hanging from his face mask and use neither? Wouldn't that be a 
Dude, Andy, I am right there with you. I didn't know he had two, but it is always dangling, and it drives me nuts. Either just you're supposed to – now, back when I played, you had to wear a mouthpiece or they'd they give a penalty and take you out of the game. I don't know what the rules are now, but for the receivers that do the old attached ones, I wish they would – and they don't put it in their mouth, just take the damn thing off. It drives me nuts. I would feel like it would be a distraction too. Maybe it's for show. I don't. I don't know. These 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 kids nowadays, who knows? Uh, Nineteen sixty six HBC beers available at Spurs Gridiron Grill Gator Games in the Swap and Select Retail Outlets. Crisp American Lager. Nineteen sixty six HBC beer. This thing in sports, which is brought to you by our good friends at Campus USA Credit Union, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. This day in sports. <clears throat> In 2004, 17-year-old Lionel Messi makes his league debut for the FC Football Club Barcelona in a one-nothing win across against his crosstown rivals uh, there in Barcelona. Is Messi the one down there playing in Miami now? I know nothing about soccer. Sorry, if you love soccer, I don't watch it. Um, Cliff says the players wearing the short pants drives him nuts. Yeah, there's no rule against it. Back back when we played, you had to cover your knees. You don't have to anymore. So uh, it makes them feel like they can run faster. Joseph says none of the players wear mouthpieces or knee pads anymore. I didn't wear a mouthpiece in the in the NFL because you didn't have to. Um, Merch, he says Merch never wears his. What is it? It must be sticking in his uh, face mask. Yeah, I, no reason to – it's, it should be a distraction. So, um, as JC said, the the Astros lose last night to the Rangers. Tonight, you got the D backs and the Phillies and Monday Night Football. Uh, we have the Cowboys and the Chargers. There should be some uh, college games tomorrow night. So, uh, it's a bye week. It'll be a good week for the Gators to get healed up, uh, for us to take a break, play some golf. And uh, Dan wants to know what about the officiating Saturday? Um, I thought there was a couple of PIs that they should have called uh, on South Carolina, if that's what you're referring to. And yes, and Greg, JC and I forgot to fail to mention this, and we can talk about it later in the week. How about Stanford's comeback against Colorado? Uh, I went to bed. It was 29 nothing in the hotel and then woke up and saw it all over Twitter. But now Stanford was moving the ball the first half, just did dumb stuff. But, yeah, Colorado's not a very good team. Uh, the quarterback's very good. good. Obviously, the uh, Hunter kid's a good player, but they're, 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 they were fortunate to win the games that they've won. I mean, think about it. They kicked some last-minute field goals um, against some bad football teams. So, I don't know if they'll win another game, quite honestly. Nora wants to know, is the Miami Hurricanes coach on the hot seat? I, I don't know. I don't follow the Canes. Um but obviously they took a beating to the Tar Heels, and I want to say they got Clemson this week. So that will not be – that's a loss. It's that simple. <clears throat> Twan says, Shane, I think we were talking about some of the defensive linemen being held during the past. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people said that the uh, the D-line – you guys get to see that because during um, TV they show a lot of the replays. We have a monitor, but we got so much going on in the booth, I don't get to see that monitor a lot. Um and Dan wants to know, did I see the Saturday Night Live skit on Dion? Yes, it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. All right, before we get out of here, Natasha on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, says, catch the ball and wear whatever you want. My son hates wearing anything beyond his knees because it crumples up. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with the dangling of it. I feel like that would be a, uh, a distraction because as you're running, that thing is flopping. And if you're running a route and it flops up right as the ball is coming, does it distract you? Hope not. I guess it doesn't. Or Billy Gonzalez would tell him to take the damn thing off, right? Um, tomorrow we'll have Buddy Martin, and I'm supposed to be getting some uh, some national media guests this week to fill some time during our bye week. Uh, but there's a bit the big game in the SEC this week is Tennessee travels to. Tuscaloosa to take on, on Alabama. I think Alabama manhandles them, quite honestly. I just – Tennessee is so soft. Uh, they have one of the worst passing offenses in America. Shocking. Uh, they're very they're very easy to defend. All right. Last one and we're out of here. Uh, 
QB educate how to beat this. Teams are giving us too deep coverage look, but putting seven or eight in the box because uh, box to play the run because it appears we check down to the run when we see too deep. Uh, they can't put seven or eight in the box if they're playing too deep. Think about that. There's only 11 players. Um, if if you play a, a too high shell look, that means you got four DBs, two safeties sitting usually near the hashes. So that's four guys. So now you have seven. But if you have an if you're an eleven personnel, one of those guys is outside the box, covering the slot receiver. So now you have six in the box, and you have six blockers because we have a tight end and our five linemen. So that's when you run the football. They go to one high. Now they have an extra guy in the box, but now they're playing mainly man coverage or they're playing cover three, which is a zone. Great time to throw the football. It's all a numbers game. Uh, maybe we'll get a chalkboard going one day. Appreciate y'all uh, chiming in today. It's a good. It's always a good Monday when the Gators win. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.